candidates in this election are eligible for presidential candidate broadcasts. This is the second of two programs. Each candidate is allotted a maximum of 10 minutes. The order of the first presidential candidate broadcast was determined by the alphabetical order of the names as reflected in the electoral roll. This order is reversed for the second presidential candidate broadcast tonight. The candidates are Mr. Tan Kin Lian, Mr. Thaman Chumagaratnam, and Mr. Ngkok Song. We begin with Mr. Tan Kin Lian. My name is Tan Kin Lian. I'm contesting the election to become President of Singapore. Under the Constitution, the President has two specific duties, which are to safeguard the past reserves and uphold the integrity of the public service. If elected, I will carry out these duties diligently, honestly, and to the best of my ability. The President must always put the needs of the country and the people first. He must be committed to the duties and responsibilities of this high position, understand the needs of the common man and serve without fear or favour. The President is also responsible for safeguarding our past reserves. In order to do so, he must possess independent thinking, good financial knowledge, and a strong sense of integrity and responsibility to the people. As a trained actuary and chief executive officer of NTUC Income, for 30 years, I have a good track record of making sound investment decisions that improve the lives of many people. Under my leadership, I grew the assets from 28 million to 17 billion, or 600 times in 30 years. I love my work because I was able to influence decisions that benefit ordinary people, especially through difficult times. I also had the opportunity to represent Singapore on the international stage by being on the board of the International Cooperative and Mutual Insurance Federation for more than 20 years including five years as its chairman. This federation had over 123 members, which are large insurance groups in 65 countries. I believe my knowledge and experience will be useful in performing the key duty of the president. As custodian of the reserves, I will ensure that our past reserves are managed prudently to benefit Singaporeans both present and future. The President is the head of state of Singapore. As a leader, you must not be afraid to exercise independent thinking and not be afraid to stand alone for what is right. Throughout my life, I have had to stand alone through many difficult times. When many investors lost their savings by investing in bad financial products in the past, I was not afraid to stand up on their behalf to ask questions. It takes, it takes courage tenacity and resilience to ask these difficult questions and make people accountable for their actions. I have a deep appreciation for the difficulties of ordinary people, 
because I came from a very poor and humble background. I myself keep to a simple lifestyle and live frugally. When I was young, I lived in several rental homes all over Singapore. I could not go to university despite having very good results because I needed to provide for my family. I self-studied and worked my way up to become the CEO of NTUC Income. Today, I am grateful for a loving wife, three adult children, and five adorable grandchildren. It is wonderful to have a family where the members take care of each other over the years. I will continue to uphold important family values as this is the cornerstone of any society. As an active and outgoing person, I like to share about my daily activities and observations of everyday life. I have never meant any disrespect to the people I encounter. To all those who have found any of what I have said or done in the past upsetting or inappropriate, I would like to sincerely apologize for it. I will be more mindful of what I say in the future. I also thank my wonderful family and supporters for their understanding and support. During the walkabouts throughout my campaign, I have met many people from all walks of life, and many have come forward to join and encourage me with their support. I am very grateful to all those around me who are willing to put down any differences we may have and stand together with me for the benefit of Singapore. I've also met many ordinary people who told me about their hardship caused by the recent increase in the cost of living. Many young people told me that they do not plan to get married because of the high cost of housing and difficulty of getting secure and well-paying jobs. If I am elected as president, I will act independently of the government and do my best to convey the views of the people to the government and help the government to find out ways to make life better for the people. I am aware that the President does not have the executive authority on these matters. However, I believe it is possible to achieve these goals by using the soft influence and prestige of the President's office. I hope to work in collaboration with the government to achieve our common goals for the benefit of Singapore. As President, I will champion the well-being of Singaporeans and always put the people's needs above my own to help make a better life for all of you. I hope that you will vote for me, Tan Kin Lian, to bring back trust and give hope to the people. Thank you. The next candidate is Mr. Thaman Chimagaratnam. Saudara Saudari Sikalan. Manikam, Saga Kudimakale, Kawe Tongpao, my fellow Singaporeans. I'm standing in this election because we face a new and challenging future. We face profound global risks and uncertainties, which are likely to grow in the decade ahead. 
the demands on the presidency have hence grown. I believe I can now best serve you as president, standing apart from government and above politics as we enter this new and more complex future. My whole purpose in life has been to serve Singapore and to help achieve a fair and socially just society. It has been so since my days as a student activist. I stayed true to this purpose in life throughout the four decades that I spent in government, first in the public service and then in political office. Why did I choose to serve in politics over the last two decades after being a technocrat over the previous two decades? I wanted to serve actively on the ground as well as to have a direct hand in shaping policies for a fairer and more inclusive society. My motive throughout has never been politically partisan. As everyone familiar with me and the work I have done, both within and outside government, has known. I have played an active role in the shift in government policies to provide greater support for the disadvantaged, to improve the quality of jobs and pay for lower income workers, and to improve retirement security for our seniors. If I am a partisan, it is that I am a partisan for better chances and better support for Singaporeans who have less. To help them uplift themselves and to uplift all our spirits. That is my purpose in life. My fellow Singaporeans, this presidential election is about our future together as Singaporeans. I appeal to each and every one of you to vote for me on Friday as a vote for a future of stability, a future where every generation can feel fortunate that we are Singaporeans and a future of unity and deeper solidarity among us. I have been deeply privileged to serve you in many ways over the decades, working on the ground, as well as shaping national policies for a fairer and more inclusive society, and flying the Singapore flag high internationally. I therefore come with a breadth and depth of experience that I have to say with humility, is unique among the candidates in this election. Firstly, on the international stage, I will bring to the presidency my international standing. I am the first Asian to have chaired the International Monetary Fund's key policy advisory committee. I have led high-level councils of the United Nations, the G20 and other global bodies on a wide range of areas, international economic, financial, human development, environmental and pandemic challenges in recent years. I have also built up strong relations with senior figures among our partners in Asia, the West and the developing world. Secondly, as the guardian of our country's reserves and ensuring the integrity of key public service appointments, the President holds the second key in both areas. I come with a breadth of understanding in each of these critical areas that is not matched by either of the other candidates. Put simply, I know our whole system of reserves inside out. Most importantly for the President, this involves understanding how the reserves are safeguarded and used by the government. I have been chairman of MAS for the last 12 years. I have also been chairman of GIC's Investment Strategies Committee over the same period. Because of these roles, I have extensive knowledge of the overall framework and strategies for the investment of our reserves. However, the elected president has no decision-making power on the investment of reserves and in fact plays no role in investment strategies. 
the president's most fundamental role when holding the second key to the reserves is quite different. It is to ensure that the spending policies of the government and various other public agencies do not lead to the nation's reserves being misused. This concerns the Ministry of Finance and Government rather than the GIC. The President's power in holding the second key requires making careful judgments on the use of the reserves to support national responses to major crises. This was needed for the first time in 2009 during the global financial crisis when I was finance minister and we had to save Singaporeans' jobs. It was needed on a much larger scale during the recent COVID-19 crisis. Unfortunately, COVID-19 will not be the last major crisis to hit us. We have to be prepared for future crises, which could come from economic or geopolitical disasters or another pandemic. We also have to prepare to respond to climate change, which may require major long-term investments to ensure Singapore remains a safe and livable home for Singaporeans. Because of my responsibilities as Finance Minister for nine years and as Deputy Prime Minister and Senior Minister for many years, I have deep knowledge and experience on how our reserves must be safeguarded to benefit both today's generation and future generations of Singaporeans, and on the judicious use of the reserves during a major crisis. My third area of experience is in developing stronger bonds on the ground among Singaporeans. I come with a record of connecting with people from all backgrounds in Jurong. That speaks for itself. I have also spent many years supporting NGOs nationally. If I'm fortunate enough to be elected president, I will be active in mobilizing support for ground up initiatives to uplift every group with a disadvantage, those facing challenges in mental well-being and everyone who needs a second or a third chance. I will encourage and foster deeper interactions between our different faiths and cultures so as to deepen our multicultural identity. And I will continue to bridge the diverse views that are natural in our democracy. There is always common ground to be found. My fellow Singaporeans, our most precious asset is our unity and solidarity as Singaporeans. We must deepen that solidarity in the years to come. It requires deepening respect for all, regardless of backgrounds or educational achievements. It requires recognizing the potential in every Singaporean and the worth every individual contributes. As they say in Chinese, Tian Chen Wo Chai, Bi Yong. We can and must deepen our respect for each other. Saling menghormati. Oruvarok korvar mariave. Xiang hu jing chong. Respect for all. It is at the heart of our future as Singaporeans and why our brightest years are ahead of us. I thank you, each and every one of you, for listening to me and respectfully appeal for your support on Friday. Majula, Singapura. The final candidate is Mr. Ngkok Song. My fellow Singaporeans, the future well-being of Singapore depends on you electing a competent president who is non-partisan. Non-partisan means not biased towards any political party. There are three candidates standing for the elected presidency. One candidate resigned a month ago from the government and from the ruling party to stand 
for president. The second candidate has opposition leaders in his campaigning. I am the only non-partisan candidate. I do not and have never belonged to any political party. Now, why is it important to have a non-partisan president? The Constitution of Singapore requires that anyone nominated for president must not belong to any political party. The intent of our Constitution is very clear. To have a non-partisan elected president so that the president is above the partisan politics of parliament. Yet, all our elected presidents since 1993 were affiliated to or endorsed by the PAP. So our system has been compromising the spirit of the constitution. Our system has complied with the letter, but not the spirit of the constitution. Our system allowed past political leaders to stand for election merely months after resigning from their political party. We are now in 2023. This is not 1993. I strongly believe that the time has come in this presidential election to uphold the spirit of the Constitution. Now, why is it an urgent matter to have a non-partisan president? Because the risks have increased. In 1984, at his National Day rally, our then Prime Minister, Mr Lee Kuan Yew, raised the idea of the elected presidency. Mr Lee warned us of silver-tongued politicians who make empty promises and squander our hard-earned reserves. Earlier this month, our current Prime Minister, Lee Hsien Loong, said, if you have a freak election, you have the wrong team in charge. You have a rogue government who wants to raid the reserves. In one term, all your life savings of generations of Singaporeans will be gone. My fellow Singaporeans, politics in Singapore today has become highly contestable. Having the wrong team in charge in the near future is no longer a remote possibility. Our government leadership will also undergo a generational change in the next few years. There are uncertainties and risks with all transitions. The recent controversies discussed in Parliament imply that we can not take for granted the exceptionally high standards of incorruptibility and integrity of good government. In the face of such increasing risks, we cannot afford to have a president who may be beholden to political parties who endorse their nominations and help get them elected. We cannot afford to have a president who is manipulated by political parties to serve their political agenda. In the coming years, there will be more reasons and more crises to draw heavily on our reserves. Can we take the risk of having another government endorsed president checking government requests to draw down our reserves? 
Is it appropriate for an ex-finance minister who set fiscal policies to then move across the table and become the president and check on the very policies that he had put in place? I do not believe any person should be put in such a position of conflict. And we don't need to. We cannot rely on an own self check own self mechanism to safeguard our reserves or the integrity of the public service. We have had three walkovers in the last five presidential elections. While the bar to qualify for presidency is high, I believe the real reason is the perception that unless you are endorsed by the government or strongly supported by opposition leaders, you have no chance to get elected. I strongly believe that there are independent, capable Singaporeans who are non-partisan and loyal to Singapore, qualified to serve as the president, to make the right decisions and act in the interests of all Singaporeans, unencumbered by personal ties and loyalty to any party agenda, policy or ideology, past or present. I am standing in this election to set an example for more Singaporeans to do the same in the coming years. I am the only candidate in this election who is non-partisan. More than that, I have the domain knowledge and experience to protect our reserves. My fellow Singaporeans, when you go to vote on Friday, let us break from the past and take party politics out of the elected presidency. Choose a president who is competent and experienced, who is trustworthy and who has not belonged to any political party. It is time we break from the past of having a president endorsed by the PAP. The elected presidency is an office that must belong to all Singaporeans, not to any privileged group, organisation or party. I humbly offer myself as the change to a non-partisan president. I am Ng Kok Song and I humbly ask you for your vote. Nama saya Ng Kok Song. Saya berharap anda undilah saya. Washi Huang Kuo Song. Qing Tao. Wa Yi Piao. Tai Ke. Washi Ng Kok Song. Chia Tai Ke. Kuo Chi Piao. Nan. Ng Kok Song. Number A Yudan. Inuku. Van Kali. Yunggal. Thank you, my fellow Singaporeans.